Hey all you drink idiots out there, it's Eric and I have five things I did when I first started mixing drinks that were really stupid and if you can avoid them, you'll be less of an idiot than I was. So here's number one. I bought cheap booze. Very cheap stuff. These are some of the first bottles that I purchased when I decided to start making a cocktail channel because I didn't research things enough and I ended up with bottom shelf stuff like Juarez, which is a mixto, not a traditional tequila with 100% agave. It's a mixto, which means it is only 51% from agave plant, whereas something better would be 100%. I have blueberry schnapps, which how many drinks honestly have we had that have blueberry schnapps in it? It was on sale, my dumbass grabbed it. Very stupid decision. Melon liqueur, which, or melon schnapps actually, was kind of a knockoff of Midori. Not quite as good. Could have just spent a couple extra dollars and had something better. London Tower Distilled London Dry Gin. This is actually, I believe, made in Pennsylvania. Or at least companies in Pennsylvania. But it is gross, as you can see, which how much is actually still in the bottle. Then I have Cinerator, which is kind of a knockoff of Fireball, and Fireball is kind of a crappy liquor as well, so I guess it's kind of a loss on both directions. So number one, what crappy booze. Number two, this type of stuff right here, Whiskey Sour Mixer. And not just whiskey sour mix, but all kinds of pre-made mixes that I purchased, whether it be bottled lemon juice, bottled lime juice, a sour mix, a Bloody Mary mix, no matter what. These pre-made mixers are usually really sugared down. This is actually made from concentrate, not from real lemons and limes. And if you would actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of drinks that one with sour mix, the other with actual fresh juices, you would never try this stuff again. Big waste of money. Number three is I was listening to the wrong people. There are a lot of popular people out there on YouTube, Facebook, and the like that just make drinks that are basically a handful of candy, insert it into a glass, pour some liquor on it, top with Sprite, and we have a drink. The big problem with that is they're out of balance, they're entirely too sweet or entirely too sour and they just completely mask the flavor of the booze which if you're an absolute person that hates booze maybe that's for you but if you actually want to enjoy the most expensive ingredient that you're putting into your cocktails then maybe you should try something a little more balanced like I don't know some of the recipes I've made are a little more balanced if you want to check more of them out shameless plug Number four thing on that list is I did not research properly when I went to make drinks. My first ever drink, which you will never see the video of that because it is long gone, was an Amaretto Sour in which I poured two ounces of a cheap Amaretto into a glass with ice and topped it off with the pre-mentioned sour mix that I had. Yeah, the comments were brutal. And I realized quickly that if I wanted to do this, which I did, I would really have to take a closer look at the right way to do things. And that's how I ended up kind of learning my mistakes. You know, I wasted a little bit of money getting started, but overall, I think I recovered pretty well. And the fifth and final thing, it kind of goes with the third thing I mentioned on the list is I made my cocktails all diabetes cocktails. And by the diabetes cocktails, what I mean is they were 90% sugar and 10% alcohol. So in cocktails, you have kind of a ratio, a balance. You want to balance the flavors of the spirits with the flavors of sweet and flavors of sour. And you can also add some bitters in there as well. So you have your spirit, which... I'll just grab Maker's Mark while I have it. So this is a bourbon, 
It has different characteristics, different flavors that bring out those characteristics in the drink. So, usually when you see cocktails, they're either a 2-1-1 ratio or a 3-2-1 ratio. So what it means by a 3-2-1 ratio and a 2-1-1 ratio is three parts of a spirit, two parts of a sour, and one part of a sweet is a 3-2-1 ratio. A 2-1-1 obviously would be two parts of a spirit, one part of a sweet, one part of a sour. And you can also experiment a little bit with bitters in there as well, something like Angostura, or there's just so many combinations of bitters out there that you can find, and they combine nicely with certain things. You just have to kind of figure that out on, on your own, check out different recipes involving it. But those are drinks that would have more balance. Like I said, it's better than taking a glass, rimming it with powdered sugar, and then throwing a fistful of candy in it, topping it with some cheap vodka and 7-Up. That's just... To me, that's lazy drinking. That is something that, you know... But if you check Instagram for drinks, you're going to see tons of that. Whether it be, you know, Sour Patch Kids in a drink, or whatever kind of crazy mixture you're putting in there, it's going to be out of balance. And if you really enjoy, want to enjoy the alcohol you're spending your money on, you know, you, you want some balance in there. Like I said, the, the most expensive ingredient you're going to put in your cocktail is your booze. So why not get something that you're going to enjoy the taste of and something that, you know, you make your cocktails that complement those flavors, not mask them. And those are great. One thing I think, if you're a bourbon fan, check out the whiskey smash I made. Another shameless plug, but... The Whiskey Smash was a Dale DeCroft recipe. Fantastic combination, tremendous balance, and it actually brings in uh, mint, citrus, and sugar. And it turns out tremendous. Really helps the flavors of this bourbon stand out. So just do some research. You don't take much. And a lot of these drinks really aren't that hard to make. You know, you're not putting a whole lot of extra effort into actually making the drink balanced. It's just a matter of putting the right amounts of ingredients in there and coming out with something good. So there you have it folks, those are my five tips to avoid when you are first starting out. Maybe you can learn from my mistakes and not be quite as big of an idiot like I was. So until next time guys, remember it's okay to drink like an idiot. Thanks for watching.